Hey everybody, welcome to How To Tuesday. We took some questions on Instagram and one of the ones that we got this week is a very common question. People want to know if I want to get my first fly rod or I want to I want to start getting into fly fishing, what do I want to get? Now, this is a pretty easy answer for me and I'll separate it into two things. First of all, I sympathize with you, it's very confusing. There are so many models of fly rods out there. There's different lengths, there's different line weights, there's different, different uh, speeds. All of these things can be simplified down to uh, a simple answer, and that's what I'm going to give you today. I'm going to split this up into freshwater and saltwater. Okay? There may be an ideal rod for both, but I kind of doubt it. So let's start with freshwater. In freshwater, you're going to be fishing for trout, bass, northern pike maybe, um, carp, uh, panfish, all kinds of things like that. You want a rod that's going to allow you to do a little bit of all of it. Later, when you get good at fly fishing or you know, you, you start to spend more time on one thing versus another, like maybe you start to do more bass fishing than you're doing trout fishing. Maybe that's the time to get into a specialty rod or one that's a little more suited for what you're doing. But at first, you're looking for the most general rod that you can find, something that's going to allow you to fish pretty much everything in fresh water. And for that, I'm going to explain it like this. There are links of rods. And you could see really long rods, spay rods that are 16 feet long, and you can see some short little mountain rods that are seven feet long. The general length of a fly rod that I would look for for my first fly rod, or if you're just starting to kind of get into freshwater fishing, maybe you're a saltwater fisherman, you want to start fly fishing, you want to look at the nine foot rod. Nine foot rod. Now, then we're going to go to the line weights. And the line weight is a little bit confusing if you don't understand fly fishing right away. The rods are paired to the lines. The lines have a physical weight for the first 30 feet of that line, which is designated 0 to 14 or 15. 15 being the absolute heaviest for something like a, a marlin or big tuna. 0 being the absolute lightest for dry fly fishing for the smallest with the smallest flies for really generally pretty small fish as well. So zero being the lightest, 14 being the heaviest. Most people are using something between a two and a 12. The outside of that, it gets very specialized. The general, the most general rod in freshwater, in my opinion, is a five weight. A five weight fits perfectly in, into the, the mix of being able to do kind of almost anything with trout, being able to throw some bass flies and catch some bigger fish on, on bass flies to be able to throw streamers for trout. You're pretty much going to be able to do everything with a five weight. It's going to be a little light for some things. It's going to be a little heavy for other things, but it's not going to stop you from being able to take part in those, in, in, in the different types of fishing. So. The easy answer is it's a nine foot five weight. And with that rod, you're never going to outgrow it. Every freshwater fly fisherman has a couple of nine foot five weights. I mean, that is the battle axe. That is the one that you're going to be able to do almost anything. Then you're going to get into some specialized rods that, that you might want later in your career. But if you want one rod, I'm going to say it's a nine foot five weight. So every manufacturer that manufactures fly rods has a variety of these. And then you'll get further confused by looking at, um, you know, do I want a real fast action or do I want a slower action? It's best if you can go cast one of these. But if you can't, you want to look at something that is kind of an introductory nine foot five weight. And, you know, St. Croix makes some really great rods. They have some introductory series. That would be a great choice. There's lots of choices out there. Find something that fits your budget. Look at that nine foot five weight 
and you will be ready to roll. A lot of times they'll come in a combination, which is the rod, the reel, the backing, and a leader. You want to go ahead and get everything you need because if you just have a, a fly rod, no reel, no line, it's not going to do you any good. So you want to make sure that when you, when you make this purchase, you want to get the full setup. And then that way you can go home and you can start casting. There's tons of incredibly good YouTube videos on uh, fly casting that show you how to do it. Even better, if you have someone in your um, neighborhood, your, your town, that you can pay to get a fly casting lesson, that is a great investment. That's going to go a long way, especially if the instructor is very good. And there are some very good fly casting instructors out there. Um, if, that, if you can get that instruction, that's going to help greatly. So that's freshwater, nine foot five weight. That's what I suggest for freshwater. Saltwater is a little bit different game. You tend to throw a little bit bigger flies. Often it's windy. The fish are bigger, they're stronger. And a lot of times you have to cast further. And you're not doing things like casting tiny little size 22 dry flies to a trout in a stream. So you're, it, it requires a few things a little bit different. It tends to lend itself towards a little heavier rod. So if I were to make a suggestion for the most versatile rod in saltwater, I would again go with a nine-foot length. Nine foot length is, is very general, not specialized. Then, just like with the freshwater, you're going to make a choice of line weight. Seven weight in, in salt water is pretty light. Six weight is kind of a specialty rod. A 12 weight is a standard tarpon rod. So you want to go somewhere in the middle. And I'm going to say a nine or a 10 weight is going to be the most versatile saltwater rod. So if you don't see yourself fishing for tarpon for a while and you see yourself doing something that is along the, the, the Gulf Coast or something where you know you're going to fish for redfish, you know you're going to fish for trout, maybe some Jack Cravels, you know, maybe a nine weight would be a better choice. If you think, well, I'm going to be bone fishing. I live in Miami. I'm going to be bone fishing. I'm going to probably go after permit. I'm going to redfish. I'm going to fish for baby tarpon. And maybe... I might have an opportunity to cast at a big tarpon one day. Then I would say a 10 weight. So a nine or a 10, nine foot, nine weight, nine foot, 10 weight. Again, you want to go ahead and get the full complete setup. Now, it wasn't very long ago that the fly reel for salt water really required a significant investment. You had to, you had to put some money down to get a salt water reel that was going to be able to handle not just the fish. The fish is one thing. What the reel really needs to handle is the salt and the corrosion and the environment that you're in. And then you combine that with, with, with a fish that runs really hard and it causes some problems. And before there was great anodization and there were so many different reel companies, there were only a few reels that could handle this and work day in, day out, and, uh, and last for years. They were expensive. And, you know, you got what you paid for. Now, today, there are tons of real manufacturers and there are tons of manufacturers that understand what it takes to survive in a saltwater environment. The price has come way down. So you don't have to mortgage your house to get a good saltwater fly reel anymore. Um, you want one that, that fits the line, right? So you're going to need you know, about 250 yards to 300 yards of backing plus the fly line that you're going to get. So that's either a nine or a 10 weight fly line. And usually the reels are marked nine slash 10 or eight slash nine. Uh, so that would be a reel that would be a good choice for an eight or a nine weight or a nine weight or a 10 weight or a 10 weight or an 11 weight, whatever it says kind of on there. Some of them go by species of fish. They might call it a tarpon or a bonefish or a permit. Um, it 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 really doesn't matter. You're looking for that mid-range reel that's suited to a nine or ten weight uh, rod. It's gonna be lightweight. You're gonna be able to get plenty of backing on it and a fly line. I suggest that you try to buy this from somebody that can help you to spool it up. They'll use a professional line winder. They'll get that that backing on there really tight. 
They'll sell you a, a high quality fly line that's matched to the rod that you're getting. And they'll, they'll probably help you with some casting lessons. That's a big and great investment. Do that. That, that will go miles in your fly fishing career. So to recap, if we, I had to choose one freshwater rod, it's going to be the nine foot five weight. If I have to choose one saltwater rod, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I'm either going to probably land on a nine foot nine weight or a nine foot 10 weight. And both of those rods, you're never going to outgrow them. You may add to your, your quiver, but you're never going to outgrow either one of those rods. So that would be an excellent choice. Fly fishing is a really fun part of the sport. And I definitely suggest that you get into it. If you're interested in it, do it. It's really fun. And um, for me, I feel like a fly rod is just another tool, kind of like another club in the golf bag. I like all kinds of fishing. And I spend a tremendous amount of time fly fishing. It's really fun. And I encourage you to do it as well. All right. That's How To Tuesday this week. We will see you next week. And if you have any questions, just like the one that came in today, email them to me at podcast at saltwaterexperience.com. I'll be happy to answer it on How To Tuesday. You can always tag me on Instagram, Tom underscore Roland, and we'll see what we can do. And what do you think? We got a new, new studio. Connor, my man here, came up with a new studio idea. What do you think? Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right, that's it for How To Tuesday this week. See you.